Yes, ayahuasca is uh, perhaps the world's largest and most thriving psychedelic religion. It touches the lives of millions of mestizos and uh, Indians in the basin. It is a combinatory drug, which makes it especially interesting to pharmacologists because its two principal ingredients are themselves inactive except in the presence of each other. So what we have in the case of ayahuasca is an example of a highly evolved folk pharmacology mm -hmm. and how a discovery like this was ever made in the first place is one of the challenging questions that anthropologists have to deal with. After all, in a square mile of Amazonian rainforest, it is not unusual to encounter 50,000 distinct species of plants. How then did these uh, so-called primitive or preliterate people make the connection between the combining of the bark of one with the leaves of another, boiled and put through a number of procedures to uh, produce an intense visionary hallucinogen. This is an extremely interesting and uh, to this day unanswered question. Isn't it the case that I believe it was the German uh, chemist who isolated this uh, chem the, the chemical active ingredient in ayahuasca, originally named it telepathine? Yes, that's right. Uh, based on field reports of the states of group mind induced by ayahuasca, which is also called yahe, he felt it was fitting to name it telepathine. Now, uh, the rules of scientific no nomenclature are such that uh, the first name of a compound is always given precedent. And about 20 years after it was named telepathine, it was realized that the identical compound had been isolated around the turn of the century from the giant Syrian rue, Pergamon harmala, and named harmine. So today, the active ingredients of ayahuasca are known as harmine, harmaline, and tetrahydroharman. But your point is well taken. The, what struck the early explorers and ethnographers into the Amazon basin was the fact that the people seemed to be taking this plant preparation in order to under, uh, undergo states of community group-mindedness. And during these intoxicating intervals, uh, social plans relative to migration, hunting, and warfare were undertaken by the elders of the tribe. And uh, though the name has been changed to the more innocuous Harmane, nevertheless, there's a continued persistence of the feeling that uh, telepathic and group mind states are induced by this particular plant mixture, and it's particularly interesting in the light of the fact that the chemical constituents which make it go are in fact found endogenously in the human brain. These are not exotic compounds from the point of view of ordinary human brain chemistry. So there is a suggestion there that uh, manipulation of neurohumoral compounds, brain neurotransmitters, and that sort of thing may in fact open the door to uh, untapped areas mm -hmm. of human potential. I would imagine that many of our viewers have seen the movie The Emerald Forest, which seems to deal with the use of substances of this sort in the Amazon culture. Yes, John Borman uh, did a wonderful job with that movie. He was portraying the use of Epina snuff. Uh, that's a hallucinogenic drug complex that occurs in the eastern part of the Amazon drainage and in rural Venezuela. Uh, Epina is, uh, contains DMT and is blown up the nostrils by a cooperative friend 
and induces an intense state of hallucinogenesis. Yes, that was, I think, most people's first exposure to the real richness of the visionary pharmacopoeia that does exist in the Amazon. And there's also the suggestion there then, I guess, that DMT would trigger telepathic-like experiences or clairvoyant types of experiences. That's right, and DMT is also a product of endogenous human metabolism. It's interesting that the most intense of the hallucinogens, DMT, which you mentioned, are the ones which are most closely related to our own brain chemistry. Mm -hmm. So far from these compounds being uh, alien to the brain or being an insult mm -hmm. to the physical brain, what they really represent are the shifting of ratios of compounds already mm -hmm. present in the ordinary brain. Well, well, DMT, I believe, is dimethyltryptophan. Tryptamine. Tryptamine. That's right. Tryptamine. It's related to the yeah, protein tryptophan, is it not? It's rela related to the protein tryptophan. It's also related to serotonin. Mm -hmm. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter which occurs in all life and is most concentrated in the higher primates and most concentrated there in man. It is 5-hydroxytryptamine while DMT is, as you mentioned, NN-dimethyltryptamine. So there is a very close structural affinity between mm -hmm. this extremely potent and exotic hallucinogen and the very uh, common basis for ordinary consciousness, serotonin. That's correct. Mm -hmm.